All right, there you go. Um, okay, well, welcome to the last and hopefully not least talk to on this conference. Um, I'm Stasia Kosinski. I'm a uh, committer on Lucene Solar project. I recently uh, joined the project, and I work on mainly on the dynamic clustering of search results there. Um, and I'd like to talk um, a little about it, how to enable it, and how to use it in some hopefully creative way. Um, the dynamic search results clustering is based on the Carrot Square framework, which uh, I d developed together with, uh, with David. We work on some other projects as well, but this is the main one. Um, there was an earlier, uh, earlier today, there was an interesting talk about clustering. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have attended it. Just a few people, well, that's brilliant, because um, I assumed that, um, well, I I'll just uh, use this simple sentence to say, uh, what clustering is about. So it's, it's, it's essentially about uh, putting similar objects together and separating this, the, the similar ones. And obviously uh, an object can be anything, can be a text document, a tweet, a, a user, whatever. Uh, for this talk we'll be, we'll be um, concentrating on search results. So that, that's one thing I wanted to say. Another thing is that uh, in some cases clustering can be trivial. And it can produce brilliant results. The problem is it doesn't happen in the real world. Uh, the real world is that clustering is hard. It produces sort of, well, imperfect results, but they, they're still useful, which is important. Um, so we'll be sticking around this area for, for most of the time. Uh, but what's important to, to realize here is that in some cases, it just can't be done. It doesn't make sense. I mean, the, the input may look perfect, it, it's beautiful, but it just, it's impossible to find meaningful groups in that. So it, it, it's really good to be aware of that, but obviously we'd be uh, sticking with the hard but doable case, or, or actually we'll be assuming that we're dealing with the hard but uh, do, doable case today. Um, so search results clustering, um, it's been for a while actually around, and um, if you go to the carrot square demo, and uh, type, for instance, Apache, you'll see the web search results divided into some uh, hopefully meaningful groups. You'll, you'll see something about the, the Apache Foundation, something about the web server, but also uh, the sort of non-technical results, such as the Apache tribe or the company that happens to be called Apache. Uh, so this is an example of, I'd call it explicit clustering. You submit a query, you get the results, and you get clusters, well, hopefully well labeled, and for each cluster you get documents. Um, but on the other hand, if you, if you go to Google and type the same query, uh, on the very first page you'll, you'll see, again, the results related to the software foundation, the, the, the um, oops, the HTTP server, uh, but also the corporation country and tribe, uh, which I don't know how they do it, but the, the net effect of it is that there is some sort of implicit clustering as well in there. All right, um, uh, before I move on to the more technical stuff, I'd like to highlight a few differences between the document or collection clustering you've seen earlier and the search results clustering. Um, these are actually quite complementary. So for, for document clustering, you obviously want to cluster the whole collection. There's probably a lot, a lot of documents in there, so it's going to be an offline process. It will take a while. On the other hand, search results clustering, well, you feed the search results, so you have to do it after you retrieve your results, and therefore it has to be an online process. So it has to be done in, in sort of real time. In document or collection clustering, you, you get what I call global clusters. So the you, you, you create cluster once, and you have to just stick with them. Uh, they they they're static. On the other hand, in, in search results clustering, the clusters are dynamically generated based on the user queries, so, so they can be specific to, to the specific query. And finally, if you, if you do document clustering and you use it at search time, there's no cost because you've done the clustering before. On the other hand, in, in search results clustering, obviously, you'll have the per query cost, but the, the nice thing about search results clustering is that you don't get this maintenance headaches. So what happens if you add documents? Do you try to stuff them into existing clusters, or do you uh, just ignore them? Do you recluster the whole thing? You don't have this problem in search results clustering because you do clustering on the search results. Um, another thing about search results clustering, about the algorithms actually, is that uh, it, it's good to have an algorithm that produces 
uh, some meaningful labels for the clusters so that you can show them to the users. So for the rest of this talk, uh, I'd like to very briefly show how to enable clustering in SOAR. It's, it's, it's really simple. And then uh, make a few comments about the uh, performance impact and how, how we can tune it. Mm. Finally, literally about, uh, about one slide about tuning the clustering uh, as such. And I'd like to show some, some example of practical use of clusters. Right, so uh, search cells clustering is implemented as, as a standard solar component, so all you need to do is to uh, add it to your solar config. Um, inside the config, you can define a number of what we call the, um, engines, clustering engines. An, en an engine is essentially a clustering algorithm with some configuration for it. The clustering is based on carat square, and we have currently three algorithms to choose from. Uh, the default one is Lingo, which is not very fast, but uh, we claim it produces nice clusters and nice labels. Um, the other one is the STC, that's a classic. It's much faster. It produces slightly where slightly labels and clusters, but still useful. And, and for those who love the classics, there's the K-means algorithm, uh, which you should be familiar with. Right, so once you've added the component, you need to reference it in some request handler. Uh, and this is a good chance to add some extra configuration. Uh, first of all, you need to say that you actually want to use clustering. And then uh, the component is prepared to do both, the, the search results clustering and uh, collection clustering. Currently, only search results clustering is, is implemented, but you, can, you, need, you still need to say that you want to do uh, the results clustering. You can choose a default engine, uh, but most importantly, you have to say on which fields you'd like to apply the clustering, or which fields should provide the content for clustering. And uh, documents in Carrot can consist of three types of, say, content. Uh, there's a title, the snippet of the proper content, and, and the URL. Um, the reason we make a distinction between the title and the snippet is that, or the content, is that very often the titles will be sort of nicer, less nosy, and if we give uh, the chance to the clustering algorithm to sort of boost the titles, chances are they, they produce better, better labels and better clusters. And actually, Lingo does that. So that, that's why you have these separate. Um, the URL is, is actually used only for the presentation purposes. It's not used for, for clustering. Um, another important thing about the fields is that, for the time being at least, uh, they have to be uh, stored fields. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, we like to generate nice labels. And to do it, we use what we call phrases, which is essentially frequent sen uh, sequences of, of words. And the easiest way to, to do it would be to just pass the raw, raw data and not the tokenized one. All right, so if, if you do these two things, you're ready to test if, if, if this works. Um, the only notable thing here is that it's good to use some more than the default 10 uh, search results to, to get some, some reasonable clusters. 100 is perfect, 50 should do, 30, depending on the content, should be or should not be fine. So if everything is fine, you should see a new array in the results, an array with clusters, and for each cluster you'll see the hopefully uh, human readable label for the cluster a list of uh, documents, IDs that are a member of the cluster, and the score. The score is, well, it, it's algorithm dependent, first of all. It's, it does not usually have an absolute meaning. It's just um, the higher the score is, the, the better the algorithm thinks the cluster is. So if, if you uh, order the clusters by score, uh, you, you, you should, you'll get the order by the quality, at least according to the algorithm. Um, one thing to notice here is that uh, there is this, the maybe, uh, this other topics cluster which has, um, which has the documents that the clustering algorithm did not know where to put. And this is in, con in contrast to k-means, because in k-means you try to stuff every document in some cluster. Here we, we allow this sort of flexibility to leave out the, uh, the documents that we don't know how to cluster. All right, um, I mentioned clustering adds uh, some sort of overhead on top of, on top of your regular search time. 
And uh, this overhead can actually vary from huge to negligible, depending on how you configure things. And uh, quite obviously, the, the two main factors here are the amount of content you cluster and the algorithm you choose. And obviously, um, the more content you, you cluster, the, the longer it's going to take. Um, I ran this very, very simple test that's uh, one thread uh, clustering of 100 rows with two different algorithms and two, uh, a few different settings. So if you, if you cluster 100 rows and 600 characters each with lingo, you're going to get hit pretty, pretty hard. It's, it's probably not going to work in, in the sort of production environment. The, the, the overhead is too high. But what you can do is to limit the amount of uh, content you cluster if you apply highlighting or sort of extract um, query, uh, query specific snippets before clustering, therefore limiting the, the length of the documents. Uh, you'll, you'll get some nice speed up here, even if you, if you add the, the time required for highlighting. Uh, another sort of bonus if you uh, add highlighting is that chances are you'll get better clusters because the content will be sort of focused around the query. Uh, you could go in even further with that and just use titles for clustering. And again, th there's some speed up here. And in fact, you, it, it, just using titles doesn't mean uh, much worse clusters because again, the titles are, if they are sort of nice and uh, noise free, you should be able to see some, some nice clusters and some li nice labels. Uh, so that's, that's one thing, limiting the, the length of content. Another thing is uh, switching to a different clustering algorithm. If you drop, drop lingo and use uh, the STC, you'll see some dramatic uh, changes, well, in clusters and cluster labels, but also you'll see changes in the clustering, uh, clustering time. So if you just stick with titles and use STC, I'd say the, the, the overhead is, is manageable. All right, so to, to summarize the performance discussion, if you need performance, try to limit the, the amount of text to cluster, either by choosing the sort of short fields or by applying highlighting the extreme cases using the titles only, or the sort of very, very short, short fields. Um, finally, you can, you can switch to uh, STC from Lingo, and you can also tune some algorithm-specific stuff. There's, there's a section in Carrot Square Manual about that. All right, so um, another thing you may want to tune is, uh, is to tune the clusters themselves. And uh, to do that, I I'd recommend a tool we, uh, we wrote for Carrot Square. It's called uh, Carrot Clustering Workbench. It's a desktop application that can download search results from uh, pretty much, well, quite a lot of sources, including Sora. So you can uh, take your uh, sort of solar uh, URL, some fields name, field names and query, put it into Workbench and it will fetch the results for you, the search results, and then apply clustering on that. The nice thing about uh, the Workbench is that you can change the various parameters of the clustering algorithms in real time and see uh, how they impact the, the clusters. You're, I, I guess that the, the most uh, typical things to tune would be the number of clusters, the, the length of labels, the uh, sort of preferred size of clusters, but there's much, much, much more in there. Um, so when, when, you, when you're done with tuning, you just um, save uh, settings as an XML. There's an XSLT on SolarWiki to, you can use to um, transform it to um, the syntax required by SolarConfig. Another thing you're very likely uh, to need to tune is lexical resources. Uh, if you, if you uh, attended the, the earlier talk about clustering, you saw this, uh, this list of clusters dominated by the stop words. So uh, here, this, this is, uh, although the algorithm is, is different, it's exactly the same case. So you'll need to, uh, you'll need to tune your, uh, your stop words list. Uh, it kind of comes with the defaults, but, but it may not be, uh, may not be suitable for, for every case. So that, that's a stop words that's pretty, pretty typical. There's uh, something called stop labels, a list of, uh, you can use to filter out uh, meaningless labels as well. Meaningful class, meaningless cluster labels. 
when you're done with tuning, you can uh, save the uh, modified files to solar home slash conf slash clusterings slash carrot square, and solar should pick them up. All right, so, so we're done with configuration, tuning. It's time to do something uh, useful. And um, I thought I'd show you uh, a UI we developed for one of our clients. They use uh, solar to index Dutch news sites. And on top of that, they ran a um, sentiment analysis engine, which is science. Uh, to each news item, it assigns a positive, negative, or neutral tag. And on top of that, there is this um, search UI that uh, gets the documents and clusters them and shows them in some sort of, uh, in this sort of visualization. And the uh, nice thing about this is that the color of the cluster corresponds to the sentiment of the documents in it. So I don't speak much of Dutch, but it, it, it's sort of clear that the casino business in Holland is, is doing pretty well, actually. There's lots of green here. <laughs> but there is some, some notable bad news as well. I'm not sure what it means, but it means big money, I guess. We'd like to build something, something similar. Uh, simpler, but similar. And uh, to do this, we'll, we'll need uh, four things. We'll need solar with clustering that, that's done. Uh, we'll need uh, some uh, visualization library We'll use uh, foam tree. Uh, it comes with carrot, but you can use anything else. We'll use a simple XSLT style sheet to uh, transform the XML we get from solar to the uh, format required by, by foam tree, and some HTML to uh, to sort of stitch things together. I'll I'll be showing these uh, in a second, just just to prove that they fit on on the slide. But the, everything is on GitHub for you to uh, download the experiment. So the XSLT, well, it looks scary, but it, it's really simple. It, it, literally, we take the documents and the clusters, and for each document, we emit a document tag, and for each cluster, we emit the group tag, and that, that's about it. The HTML is, is even simpler. We'll have just one input button for the URL. Uh, we'll have, yes, I, I, I had that. It's, unfortunately, it's still Flash. Uh, we'll probably be working on it, but it's still, yes, that, that's bad news for, for the iPad uh, users, I'm afraid. Um, so we'll need some placeholder for Flash. What we do here is just to initialize the visualization, and uh, when the button is pressed, we just go to the phone tree and say, hey, this is a URL, try to load the data from it and, and show it to the user. So if you, if you save the XSLT to solar home, slash conf slash XSLT C, C square, um, you should be able to, to, to um, prepare a URL like this, where you use the, um, it's called XSLT response writer, that will use this specific style sheet. We'll, we'll need to echo all parameters because the style sheet uh, uses some of them. So if everything looks, uh, works all right, you should see something like this. And, uh, I also used a, a, a just, a, just like um, mm, the guy earlier, I, earlier I used the uh, server fault uh, data. It's, what you can see here is, is 100 uh, results just from the sort of beginning of, of the dump clustered into topics. And you can see that a lot of it is dominated by Windows stuff, but there is some some storage discussions, some, some uh, PHP, I guess. But also, you'll see uh, meaningless clusters, such as significant or good things. This is where you, you need to tune uh, the lexicon resources for. Uh, the nice thing about this kind of visualization is that you can apply it to, um, to other types of uh, output you, you get from solar. For instance, from solar trunk, you, you get uh, something called pivoting. So it's essentially, it's something like hierarchical faceting. And, and here it's, it's pivoting by the tag and then the top terms in, in the title. So, so you can uh, get something like this as well. All right, so just to summarize, uh, clustering is, is pretty simple to, uh, to configure and, and, and enable. It comes uh, out of the box with, with solar. There's the clustering component wiki that has all the uh, information, reference, uh, and uh, some extra material for you. Uh, for carrot, just try, try, the, um, try the 
project's uh, web page, there's, there's publications if you're curious about the algorithms. Uh, there's lots of PDF, PDFs for you to, to check. And finally, uh, for the visualization, there is um, the, the GitHub project. All right, so that's about it. Unless there are questions, have a nice time in the room. Thank you. Oh, there is a question, but uh, one quick question. You said the algorithm is for search results clustering for quickly clustering a limited number of documents. Yes. Um, does it behave badly with more documents added? And do you think this could be changed by? Do you think it's parallelizable? Uh, um, I don't. I think it's easily parallelizable, at least for Lingo. I'm not sure about STC, David? Hard. Well, uh, the, the problem, there are two problems with it. One, one is obviously the, the processing time. Uh, another is that we do everything in memory. So the more content you have, the more, more memory you need. But the biggest problem, I, ha I think that's the conceptual problem. Uh, for If you submit, say, 1,000 documents, or, I don't know, 20,000 documents, you're going to get a lot of clusters. The, these algorithms are sort of tuned to produce fine-grained clusters of, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 50 documents. So if you, if you submit a lot of documents, you'll get a lot of clusters. In some cases, it may make sense, but in, in other cases, it, it's, going, it's not going to work. Like the, the, the algorithms that uh, were shown from Mahout, uh, they just gave you a list of keywords and it's actually hard to figure out what the cluster is about. So we keep it small to actually be able to tell. If you see the cluster label, you can actually tell what's inside. That's the point. Yeah, that's why I asked because yeah. the results are <laughs> really nice. But actually, we've tried STC for like 20,000 documents, and it, class, it, it completes in a few seconds, but the, there's the question of the quality of the results. Yeah, it's more like about hundreds of thousands of them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem. I'm very them? sorry we are running out of time. So thank you very much for this presentation. <laughs> what, what?